Hey friends, John Kennedy here, and uh, this is my development workflow. So what we're seeing here is Ubuntu GNOME 1610. It's nothing fancy, but if you write software that runs on Linux, then you kind of owe it to yourself to continually check out Linux as a platform. I was surprised at how usable it become. It's not perfect, but for me, it's a very serviceable development environment. I like it. We're not going to get too much into Linux right now, though. Let's just fly down and see the actual development environment. So this is SpaceMax, and that's running on top of Emacs. For the longest time, I was a Vim user, five, six, seven years in a row. I've tried a lot of things. Definitely check out Emacs if you never have. It's, it's worth it for the kind of the paradigm shift in the way that it works. SpaceMax kind of takes that to the next level, but also brings in a lot of the Vim familiarity, which for me was a key selling point. So I'd like to show off a little bit about it. Hopefully, you'll find something you like. Okay, so first things first, let's remember the cardinal rule of presenting and jack the font size up real well. So let's go ahead and jump right into a project. Now, Space Max is typically configured in Vim compatibility mode, and it's one of the best that I've ever seen. So we'll go ahead and press our leader key. By default, that's space. Now, rather than having to know all the key bindings up front, you'll notice that Space Max wants you to learn it as you go. So you get this little mini buffer at the bottom and it's got all of the completions that you can type after the spacebar. So you can't see it because we jacked the font size up, but off to the right, there's P for projects. So we'll press that and here's all the commands we have for projects. Uh, again, you can't see it off to the right as P for helm projectile find project, you know, which granted may not be the most intuitive thing ever, but it works. So we'll press that and end up being space PP and we get our project finder. A project finder is a beautiful type ahead so the beautiful thing about this is I did not have to set anything up. Um, projectile, the library that SpaceMax uses, automatically figured it out when I opened up one of these files that had that, re that lived in a .git directory that I must be interested in those files as projects. So I didn't have anything to do for that. Um, so we'll select the Feud project. That's just a little uh, Elixir Phoenix project I've got going on. And then it asks you what file you want. We'll select just the readme. That's fine. And here we are. Okay, so we're gonna make a quick change to our readme file. Now this is all Vim keys. So we'll find the line we wanna change, uh, D dollar sign, delete till the end of that line. We'll type our replacement text, that looks good. So let's play around a little bit too while we're here. Slash searches, just like in Vim. Colon commands work, so you can write colon W um, to save the file, which is probably a really good idea. And uh, let's get fancy. So let's uh, GG to go up to the top, and then colon percent S to start a replacement, we will search for, let's go surveys, and let's say we want to replace those with quiz. So survey to quiz, and we can add modifier, so global, more than one per line, and case insensitive. And you can see that SpaceMax is previewing the change in line, but let's escape out and not make that change. So let's go ahead and find another file. We'll uh, press space PF, and that will give us the file finder again for this project. Uh, we'll look at the web.ex file, standard kind of Phoenix web.ex file, nothing fancy here. Um, so let's go ahead and just switch back to our readme file. Now let's run some commands. Uh, typically when I'm doing software development, I might have a terminal emulator open up in the background. So I can alt tab over to my terminal, or maybe I'm getting fancy and doing like tmux in the console, or maybe I'm just exiting my console editor and typing commands and restarting it, whatever, with SpaceMax. You don't need to do any of that. If we press our space key again, we can see that one of our options is open shell, and that's on the apostrophe. So we'll space apostrophe, which is a really nice thumb pinky roll if you're on a QWERTY keyboard, and you end up getting a little mini buffer at the bottom of the screen. Now this thing is a full-fledged uh, shell in every respect. This one is running the Emacs shell. That's kind of a shell built into Emacs. Um, it's good enough for most of the things that I do, but you can configure SpaceMax to run any shell that you want when you press this combo. So as you can see, we can ls out and look at directories. It's got color. Um, we can cat out file contents. Uh, this is a Phoenix project, so typically we'll want to run a mix command. We can see that here. The beautiful thing about this buffer is that it is a normal Emacs buffer in every way, shape, and form. I can press escape, go back into normal mode, search for things using slash, find all the occurrences of prints. I can even, if I want to document some of these commands, uh, shift V for visual line mode, select a few of them, and I can toss them up into the readme buffer just by pasting them like any other thing that I've yanked and pasted in SpaceMax. So this is super powerful, especially if you find yourself constantly bouncing back and forth uh, between a shell and your editor. Sometimes though, you wanna run longer running processes. So you could do those in the little mini uh, shell here, but let's not do that. Instead, 
we can run alt x, what Emacs users would call meta x, and here's a list of all the commands that we can run. I'm going to run the e shell command, give myself an e shell buffer, and for example, we can run mix phoenix.server, which spawns the development server for this project. And so you can see it runs just perfectly. I've got it running here, and then I'm going to rename the buffer. So we'll rename this one to feud server. And now if we look in our buffer list, we'll see that we've got all of the, the files that we're working on, the buffers that are pre-made, and our feud server. And so this is really powerful if you want to keep all of your logs and your development output in one place. Okay, so finally, let's go to commit our work into source control. Now we have our little mini shell here, so we can go ahead and just run git commands from here, but there's a much better way to do that. Space GS in Space Max will launch Magit. Magit is absolutely the best Git front end that I've ever used, and it's honestly the reason that I kept going back to Emacs so often. Uh, let me show you why. So as you can see immediately, it's showing me the head revision of my project, and the revision at the origin, and the revision at the place that I'm going to push to. Now it's the same as the origin in this case, but sometimes it isn't. So you can see also that it's got all of the untracked files in the project, as well as all of the files that I've made changes to. So you can hide out, for example, untracked files just by pressing tab on the header there, and that show, takes those away. If we scroll down to unstaged files, let's go ahead and press tab on the readme. Now you can see all of the changes that are in the readme. Nice graphical diff here. Um, untab, press S to stage this file. But maybe we didn't want to stage the whole file. Let's go down, press U to unstage that, come back up, tab in, and you can see that not only is there the change that we made and the additional notes section, and if you scroll down, you'll see some lines that I removed from the file. What if I only wanted to commit some of this? You can see that the two chunks of the diff are highlighted as I scroll. I can press S on one of those chunks and stage just that chunk. If we go down to the staged files area, you can see that the readme is there. If we tab in, you'll see that it only staged the portion we're working on. But it gets even better if I go back up here to the readme file and visual line mode, highlight just these two lines that we changed and press S, that will stage just those two lines that I had highlighted. So Magit is very powerful if, like me, you forget to do your source code uh, control as you go. I'm a big fan of having very small modular commits that you can apply on top of one another and not have big gigantic commits, but I'm terrible at actually doing it. Magit lets me go back and kind of piece my work together into commits that make logical sense. Okay, that's it. Uh, everybody, thanks for watching. I hope you picked up something very useful from this. Um, and I think the YouTube Terms of Service require me to say, if you liked what you saw, click subscribe. Thanks for watching.